I think you guys have talked about this before, but do you get backlash for being an interracial couple? Um, that was a bold question. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm going to. <laughs> Why are we not preaching the Bible? Oof, tell them. Yeah. Like, at what point is someone going to be like, where does it even say that in the Bible? Mm -hmm. yeah. And... Welcome back, everybody, to the podcast. I am your host, Janine Amapola Ward. I am joined here today with my sexy co-host. Hey. Chill out. Kayla Ward. Chill out. You're going to make me act up. Uh, don't do it on camera. Oh, don't. I won't. <laughs> uh, you guys, welcome back to the podcast. Happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are having a good Tuesday. If you're listening on a Tuesday, we just got back from one of the most fun weeks it was my birthday yesterday it was fun we're about to you have your book party tomorrow my book party tomorrow my book comes out oh my gosh the day that this podcast is coming out God, you scared <gasps> me my book comes out this Hold day up. don't scare me like that i thought I'm like sorry. something happened there no <laughs> that was that was an abrupt emotion i just was like whoa so guys my book is now available i'll talk more about this eventually but my book is now available becoming happy and healthy you guys can click the link down below and get it i cannot believe this is finally out in the world i'm like so excited for you guys to read it if you want comment to, down below if you've ordered it already if you want to get rich buy our book that is <laughs> not what this book is about it's <laughs> Let me tell a self-help book come on but yeah we just got back from my birthday trip that caleb planned for us it was so sweet he did a little staycation for us at the adolphus surprised me he told me pack my bags and i did and then now we're here happened? now you guys might notice we have a different backdrop oh yeah you're like i didn't address the elephant in the room because we have probably the coolest i would say coolest pretty freaking cool yeah. youtubers instagram <laughs> Couple, couple TikTok guys. There are there are cringy couples out there for sure in them. the Instagram YouTube world, but this is not one of them. They're funny. They're also godly. They have an amazing marriage. They have mm -hmm. cutest two girls. Yep. Stop. And we're just gassing them up the right front of us. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, I'm Josh and Savannah. Going, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, guys, Thank for, you guys for having us. And I'm honored to be here. Yes, we are a little cringy from time to time. We can be. We can no, be. no, I think on the spectrum, y'all are very much on the low <laughs> side of non-cringy. Yes, so. we try to be at least. Like, it was amazing. Like, we were looking at y'all stuff, and I was like, we can't. We could not do that. No. So the way you guys go about it is so... Um, you can just tell it's like, it's you guys and you guys yeah. aren't faking it. Just yeah. very authentic. Yeah. I appreciate that. Really so we're thanks for to coming be on. The pod. on yeah, yes. we, uh, we're just on y'all's podcast. So yes. for anyone listening, we are doing a podcast swap. Mm -hmm. So go to theirs. Your podcast is called For Us. For Us yes, Podcast. For Us Podcast. And they were awesome. We loved the conversation. <laughs> Great host. It was so funny too. I love <laughs> yeah. you guys. So our audience may not know who you guys are. Yeah. So for the first intro, maybe Josh, you guys can... Tell us what you guys are about, who you are, where you're from, yeah. what y'all do. Mm -hmm. Show. Um, well, my name is Josh. This is my wife, Savannah. <laughs> I'm originally from Detroit. She's from Portland. We met in L.A., Los Angeles. Uh, super long story short, I was walking on the beach, and she just found me and was no, like, yo. that is not that, true. You're my husband. <laughs> That's not true at all. We, um, we met inside of a dance class. I was filming the dance class. She was dancing. Mm. Um, did a little I creepy, the, Josh. What's up? It's a little creepy. Very creepy. It I does was, sound. I, it, it literally sounds, sounds like, bad. Yeah. So that's why I got to go to the next part very Quick. quickly. <laughs> um, but uh, I did not have the guts to talk to her after the class because I don't want to be that guy that we're referring to. Found her on Instagram, DM'd her. Uh, she showed some interest. That's super long story short. Now look at us. We're in here together. <laughs> and um, so that's that. But besides that, my wife, like I said, she's a professional dancer. I've been doing video my entire life. Now we do social media full time. Um, my wife is an amazing, uh, what am I called? I don't, I don't like the word influencer. But you know what? I have leaned into the word influencer mm -hmm. lately. Like, because we are influencers. Obviously, we, yeah. all of us. But um, the stigma that comes with it is just, you know, it's whatever. But we, uh, my wife is an amazing influencer. Um, it's just crazy to say that because as a dancer, you really, you, you never have to talk. 
your yeah. talking was dancing. Yeah, if you would have told me that I was doing this for my job, I would have said absolutely no way. But right. here we are. I know, but now <laughs> looking at her now, she's like, all she does is talk uh, in, like, in, a good, in, a gr- in the best yeah. way. Uh, she's, she's like, never so stops talking. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> she's so creative. Uh, she's always pushing me. Okay, We're pushing this is so sweet. You're just like bashing lo- me. And now I is. have to, do I, should I intro no, you? No, no, I'm no, nervous. Okay, no, okay. I don't need no intro. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that. We have a podcast. Um, we are parents. My wife is pregnant right now. Yes. Oh. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yes. Yes. Baby boy. Baby, we're having a son. They're trying I'm, to steal our baby names. Yeah, we yeah, literally were like, oh um. Oh, God. Yeah, we don't <laughs> we have a baby some. name. Please let help Guys, us. Guys, drop some comments. Let them know what they oh should name gosh. their son. Yes. That'll get the comments. I right wanted there. to ask, did he just look at you one day? We're like, we're starting a YouTube channel. How did no. you guys, how did that come to fruition? I actually, it's funny. <laughs> I wanted to start a YouTube channel and I didn't really know much about the YouTube space at the time. And this was back in 2017. I was like, babe, we should start a YouTube like and just document. We're just dating. We had just, we'd been dating for what? Like maybe like seven months at the time. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, it would just be fun. Like, like all of our memories and stuff. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that it could even be our job. You knew like yes. the ins and outs more like Josh did vine back in the day. No way. So he was like, kind of had dabbled in the social media space. I was like pretty clueless, but I was like, this is so cute. Like, I love this. And that was really yeah. what started everything. Yeah. I wow. just knew when she said that I was like, okay, if we're going to do it, we're not going to have to do this because only just because I just kind of know what goes with the social media thing. And back in the day that when, that was when like YouTube was like jumping mm-hmm. too. So like, it was easy to post something or post a prank or something and get like, you know, 200,000 views and like be successful and then grow from like zero to 20,000 subscribers just like that. So I was like, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. So uh, she followed and I was like, okay, let's go. We're doing it. And then a prank that we were actually talking about (laughs) on the pod, (laughs) that prank is actually the one that got us. Kind of propelled. It got us like so many subscribers from there. And we were like, okay, let's do it. But we eventually, we were doing the pranks and the challenges, like eating a hundred chicken nuggets in like five minutes and mm-hmm. like the, just the Ooh. stuff that just doesn't even make sense. A tummy ache. Um, yeah. But <laughs> we really had a reality check and we were like, these people don't know that one, we love Jesus. Mm-hmm. They don't know anything about us, our life, like nothing. Mm-hmm. And we're kind of like hypocrites right now. Like this, yeah. mm-hmm. nothing's adding up right now. So we had a big reality check. We shifted our entire channel. Um, Definitely saw like a decline in like mm. views and stuff like that. Hundred percent. Oh, yeah. um, not even because of how YouTube shifted, just because of we weren't doing what people wanted anymore. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a great choice, though. Great yeah. choice. We're actually being ourselves and being who we were. So, and now we're fully walking into that. But I also think that came with just maturity and who we were as people too. Um, we're twenty eight now. Well, she's twenty seven. I'm twenty eight now, and we started when we were nineteen. We twenty. 2019 yeah yeah 2021 or whatever and um definitely just immature in the entertainment space in this industry Mm -hmm. or whatever didn't know what we were doing but yeah that's pretty much it so far i'm pretty sure we'll talk about more later (laughs) this is a grill session so no that's so cool (laughs) it's important to me and caleb that the supplements we take are of the highest quality and that is why for over a year i've been drinking ag1 unlike many supplement brands ag1 conducts relentless testing to set the standard for purity and potency so many people ask me okay is this really the real deal do you actually drink this you guys yes we do every single morning and if we ever miss a day a week or whatever we notice a difference and there's a reason why we've been drinking it for so long Quality for AG1 isn't just a buzzword. It's a commitment backed by expert-led scientific research, high-quality ingredients, industry-leading manufacturing, and rigorous testing. At each step of the process, AG1 goes above and beyond industry standards. I know I can trust what's in every scoop of AG1 because they obsess over product quality, the standards of manufacturing partners, and sustainability practices. Taking care of my health shouldn't be complicated, and AG1 simplifies this by covering my nutritional bases and setting myself up for success in just 60 seconds, you guys, making it so that there aren't millions of different pills, capsules to keep track of. It's literally just one scoop of AG1 mix in water every single day. AG1's ingredients are heavily researched for efficacy and quality, and I love that every scoop also includes prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes for gut support, 
vitamin C and zinc to support my immune health and so much more. So if you guys want to place your multivitamin for more, start with AG1, try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG travel packs with your first subscription at drinkag1.com slash healthy. That is drinkag1.com slash healthy. You guys are going to love this. Mm-hmm. Um, what made you guys pick each other in dating? What were those qualities that you were like, this is a godly woman, a godly man? Wow. It's kind of deep. You go first. You go, me, you go first. <laughs> man. Okay, so our backstory, we, I was it's dating. It's like unique, I guess. Yes, yeah. yeah. I was dating like my high school sweetheart. It, I, and then. But not your high school sweetheart because you didn't get married. We always talk about this. Yeah, she's not my high school sweetheart. You're right. I was dating. <laughs> isn't isn't yeah. a high school sweetheart like when you, right. you date and then you get married, right? I or is know. it just I never thought like, of it that way? Okay, maybe, maybe yes. Okay, she's not my high school sweetheart. Obviously, she was just high school girl. She was, she was yeah. a high school girl. We dated like in college a little bit. Whatever. This is not the point. Yeah, I'm like um, I'm getting sidetracked. Yes. Sorry. And it was like very messy. And like I obviously thought I was gonna marry that girl. All those things. And then eventually, like broke up. And that was that. And I said I was done. I'm not dating anybody. That was that. And and then that moment happened where like it's you were videoing minutes. her while she was dancing. I was videoing this chick. <laughs> Zooming while I was in, dancing. I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> and um, yeah. So I mean, another part of that story was I really just thought that she was the most beautiful girl in the world. Like I was like, wow, you look amazing. Um, you are. She's <laughs> like know. literally that was it. Um, she was wearing Lululemon leggings, and I was like, <gasps> bet. It was like I was. It was literally like that's that. real leggings. It was the that's leg. real. I was Ladies, like, don't wear leggings, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do not wear leggings. Um, but no, like if I'm being real, like that's like the first thing that I was like, okay, yeah, like she's beautiful. The looks amazing. I really want to get to know that person, bro. You were just talking to your ex two weeks ago. What are you doing? I um, mentally wasn't like honestly prepared for a relationship. But something about her was like, let's do it. And the thing is, when we DM'd, we were DMing for a minute. And something about that conversation really made me wanted to, want to propel um, another relationship. Um, what was the question? <laughs> what, what, like, character-wise, how, yes, how yes, did you yes, feel yes, like, right. I want to marry this there girl? There we go. I was about to give us you guys our entire life story. <laughs> um, so question? eventually, You're hilarious. once we, what was it? I think one thing it was... For me, when I when we had our first date or whatever, we I was breaking a fast at a church, and it was it was like this night service, and we're like, oh, we're all going out to Shake Shack in West Hollywood, mm-hmm. nice. and I was like, <laughs> never seen this girl in person yet after before the um, yeah. the dance or after the dance, and um, I was like, I'm about to just invite her to come meet like all of my church family or whatever. That's the first time we met in person. First time we met wow. in person. You were it, thirsty. Oh, bro. I, breaking a fast. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, I was right? like, you come in, we're going to eat, and this is just going to be that. And I was, I remember <laughs> thinking like, okay, I wonder how she's going to take me. I will say this, because I didn't know that much, I did not know if she loved God or anything, mm. if I'm being honest. Like, I didn't know what her church history was. Or actually, I think you, because you went we to Mosaic. Yeah, I was bit, like, I was like, oh, she barely. goes to Mosaic, and I go to this church, and blah, blah. Okay, I was like, okay. But I didn't know what that actually what her relationship with Jesus was. So um, I was like, okay, let me bring her to this church thing or whatever. And then I have friends too, who can kind of discern and kind of see her, mm-hmm. see her vibe and stuff like that. So I brought her to that. And first she was like, of course I'll go. I was like, okay, cool. She's not, especially in the D- D- LA dating scene, people are weird when it comes to church stuff oh, yeah. and things like that. Breaking a fast. Oh wait, are you a Christian? Like you like weird stuff. So I had to preface that. Her saying yes, I was like, okay, bet. Cool. We get there, and I'm seeing how she's interacting with people. I'm seeing how my friends are interacting with her. That was a moment I was just like, oh, all right, then. Because, like I said, I'm a very, I, I can talk up a room. I will literally, you know, make myself known, make my presence known. And she's, like, holding her own. And I'm like. I was? Yeah, you girl. You were. You were, holding you. It. you were holding your own. <laughs> and then I had like um, like a second mom who was there. And she was like, oh, my God. Like, she was so excited to meet you. Aww. And she was telling me how amazing of a person you were. And they just met you. And I was think that was one of the moments I was just like, if she can do that, hadn't met my family or anything. Um, and which was also another moment. I was like, okay, she's good. But if she can do that, hold her own. Um, and 
we can like talk about Jesus too at these events and stuff like at this event, Shake Shack eating with friends and stuff like that. Um, she might be the one or whatever. Now our story gets interesting because eventually, like I think after that, she told me she was going on tour for three months to Europe and <gasps> oh, girl. we're freshly, I mean, yes, it's amazing, but we were freshly, freshly dating and I didn't, like I said, X was still like there. Wow. On the, I was like so confused, and she leaves me for four she months. She pulled the Caleb. She. That's what yes. I'm saying. When you said you, that, I was you like, you and are Wait. similar, and then y'all yes. are similar. Yes. I'm like, yes. this is sounding she familiar. She literally <laughs> left me, and I'm like, how dare she, bro? <laughs> like, what are you doing? We, we're getting into it, but we're getting into it. Once we came <laughs> back and like we rekindled, I was like, oh, okay, like yeah. everything's still there, and that really, yeah. I, I was gonna kind of say something similar. When I left and we were doing long distance, I mean, we weren't like officially dating. We had just really been starting to like get to know each other, I guess, for like what, four weeks, three weeks? Before you left. And then I was in Europe, so totally different time zone. And all we could do was communicate with each other. And for that like three months, we talked every day Mm. on the phone too, which is actually like in the touring industry, it's really hard because you have like no free time. You're on a bus with people all the time. You're around people all the time. And so, like, I was able, and I knew that I wanted to find that time. And I was like, something is hitting different. Like, something, something's up here. And then when we got back, we were like, okay, I think, I think this is like it. But I think just being able to navigate what it was like to only be able to communicate and not be able to see each other and Mm -hmm. do it well, that was like a huge Mm -hmm. green flag for me. But then the flip side, I want to also say, Mm. I actually feel like what helps solidify and make me know, like, I think I'm going to be with this person forever is the way that we handled conflict. And Mm. like, once we started to actually go through real life things while we were dating, I was like, okay, this is actually what's important. Like we have to know that we can get through something tough together because if it's just like all happy and great, which is great. Like, I love you. You're amazing. You open the car door for me. Like you're checking off all the boxes, but like, can we navigate something that's actually real and hard? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that right before we got engaged, if we're being real, like, a big blow up happened in our dating Mm -hmm. scene and we were doing long distance on top of that. I was living in South Carolina. She was still living in LA and big blow up. Mm -hmm. And like literally I couldn't physically see her. Couldn't like share my side of a story. Like it was, we were doing long distance at the time. And then I was on tour also at the same time. This was like later. Worst situation. The odds were just against y'all. Yeah. So against. And, um, We really had to, we literally had to figure that out without seeing each other. Um, I think I eventually did see you, Mm -hmm. but then like two months Who was hurt? Who was hurt the most? Um, She was hurt the most. Yeah. But I, yeah, Yeah, I guess, I guess I was hurt the most. Yeah. Yeah. I did the hurting. I was the But I feel like it's so crazy. I was the problem. No, but even that though, like, I feel like. You hurt me, but, like, you're hurting. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I was And I feel like that's something that has to be recognized because just because I'm the one that, like, actually got hurt, if you will, or, like, was wronged, that doesn't mean, like, you hurt people hurt people. So mm-hmm. I'm, at the end of the day, I'm like, no, I'm actually worried about you. Yeah. Because I'm okay. Like, we can work through whatever we need to work through if we, if we decide that we want to do that. Mm-hmm. But, like, actually, how are you? Like, how can I help you? Yeah. It was you a know? big... Mm-hmm revealing thing for both of us but for me personally too and in that moment I was like a few things I need to move back to LA because I can't be here (laughs) anymore and two I need to I need to make this girl my wife so like literally I think two months we got engaged yeah two months after after that that, I was like okay did you think the relationship might have been over oh for sure yeah yeah there was definitely like during long distance we did long distance for like a year half of it we were dating half of it engaged or yeah Mm -hmm. something like that there were definitely multiple moments while we were like long distance. So we were like, this wow. is, this is not going to work. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, that was for sure. I, I feel like a lot of people can see these love stories online and they think it's so perfect. And it's like the Disney movies and it's like, no, this is like real life stuff. Yeah. Sure. And it shows you that God can redeem anything. Oh, like God man. can so use oh, for sure. anything and then it helps other people. And like, we've had moments too, where we were like, man, this is tough. And it's hard because, like, you don't, again, you don't want people to think, like, oh, they're toxic. Mm-hmm. But it's just real life stuff that happens. It like, sucks it's so two bad. people, yeah. imperfect sinners, trying to make this thing work. And you got your own backgrounds and stories and testimonies. And so, thanks for sharing. Yeah. For sure. So, you guys have probably not, I'm not talking bad about us, but I would say five times the amount of people mm-hmm. who follow you guys than us. Hmm. 
How do you guys, you guys are Christian, you guys are believers, you guys are very successful in what you guys are doing, and you guys are humble. How do you guys stay humble throughout the process through, you know, making money, doing the things that you guys are doing, having a healthy marriage? Yeah. Um, h- how do you guys... Or like, what keeps you guys, like, rooted? For sure. I mean, simple answer, I mean, is just knowing who God called us to be and knowing just who we are in him and and, this, and like, i'm not when, dumbing down that answer either that's right. like that is the answer and that is one way that we can stay uh grounded and rooted but we've definitely been tried like a lot of times in our marriage mm-hmm. in um this new season of life as being parents and stuff like that and uh i will say i'll say this and i'll just hit it to you or whatever <laughs> but like a big thing that hit us was like when we first our first child um uh, Rye, she, we knew what we were getting ourselves into with, with, um, having a baby or whatever, but I don't think we knew what our marriage, how that would be Mm -hmm. affected and how it would affect my wife personally. And then me as a husband being like, Oh, well, how do I help you? And then realizing that she really didn't need my help or want my help Mm -hmm. when it came, when it came to postpartum and stuff like that. So that right there, took a big turn in our relationship and we literally stopped doing social media for like four months. Mm -hmm. And that came that we were kind of forced to, but then we have, we've used that situation to propel like everything else that we do with social media. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think now looking back like that season, that's like the hardest thing we've ever been through that postpartum phase but without that, like, we truly wouldn't be as strong and, like, where we are today. I know you hear that all the time. Like, you have to go through, like, the lowest moments, I feel like, to realize kind of what you have and, like, how great it can be. Um, but I feel like, yeah, we – there's been so many times where we're, like, I don't want to do social media. Mostly me, I guess, not you. <laughs> I don't want to do social media anymore. Like, we can't do this. And even – I think we didn't know the weight of what it would be like to become parents in the public eye – not necessarily like with even showing our child and stuff like that, because I know that's such a big thing now too, but just how I personally was going to be affected. Um, Like we said, we knew it was going to be a big life shift, but I didn't really educate or prepare myself for what it would be like to walk through like postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, and then have to like show up online. And I wasn't ready to talk about it because I didn't even really know like what I was going through. So, but I was like, wait, right. so I have to just like put on a smile and like be okay. And mm-hmm. then that's when we were like, no, like we can't, I can't, like I And it was more can't. so of something she wanted to, like, she was like, I, we, I can't shoot. I can't record. Like there's nothing. And for me, I'm like a very strong will guy. I'm like, we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll we'll record, I'll shoot. Like we'll make it work or whatever. But, um, that wasn't the case. And that's so crazy. Someone, uh. One of, one of our friends reached out to you the other day asking kind of a similar question, but saying, like, how are you guys navigating um, off being online, being offline and like showing your kid and like all this stuff. And I was going to say, babe, I think <laughs> this advice is so cutthroat. But for us, it's just like stop doing social media, not full time. Like for us, mm-hmm. literally take care of yourself if you can. Yeah. Like we feel but like I we think it, even if I know, I know it's the if you can. But my thing is like that. None of this. I think it's because it's just me. Because mm. I'll figure out if we ever we have to say forget social media and go get a, forever, a, a different job. I'll yeah. go figure out how to go make us some mm-hmm. money. It's not about. It's more so about your well being, my yeah. well being, and stuff like that. So my advice would have been stop. Yeah, I feel like for us, we feel blessed enough to be able to take a break from work. You know, like not everyone can just like take four months and be like, true, I can't go to my job anymore. You know, mm-hmm. which is like just a unique situation with what we do, but. Yeah, I think that, like, was the turning point, honestly, I feel like, in our social media career, and I think that just made us all the more thankful for, like, the platform we have. To answer your question, though, Caleb, I mean, hopefully some of that did answer it, but that it shifted our mindset on social media, mainly just showing how little social media is and how, like, fake, and not fake, but... Just how little it is to like actual real life stuff. Yeah. And to how important our marriage and our kids are. And that yes. all comes extremely before anything yeah. work related. And I think that's where the, kind of the humility came yeah. from, I think. Yeah. I was just going to applaud y'all because I feel like a lot of creators have it backwards. Where they make the job the number one priority, their marriage suffers, their house, their 
everything else suffers because they're like, I want to make money. I need to get these views and they're mm -hmm. willing to do whatever. And the next thing you know, you know, you see them getting a divorce online and you're like, wait, whoa, how did that happen? Yep. And it's because like they've got it backwards. And so I just like commend y'all for being able sure. to take a step away and being like, okay, we've got to be good first. Mm -hmm. And like, we talk about that all the time where we're like, we've got to be good first. Like we don't want to film a podcast if we're yelling at each other beforehand. Like right. that's also being fake. Not to say like we haven't done that before because we're sure. like, okay, we've got to film this right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. But I do think that that's what matters most is like y'all's marriage, your kids. Right. And I just feel like I've seen a lot of people to do, they'll even use those moments to clickbait and get the views and mm -hmm. sell themselves out. Yeah, yeah like mean. sell themselves out and they'll use those low moments. And yes, you can always help somebody, which I love that perspective, but I also feel like, help people once you've gone through it, Great. not when you're going through it. Like, oh, that's get through it first and then you can share that's it. That's thing. like one of the biggest things because we've actually been there where we've shared while we're walking through it. And yep. I think some people Same. can do that and they can do it the right way. Like, I think it can be done, but I just don't ever think it's going to be as beneficial to someone mm -hmm. because how can you come online and be like, this is what I'm walking through and I'm still walking through it. And then or beneficial to you. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, beneficial to you because but you're sharing that. Yeah, you and you're getting comments, you're getting other people's advice and yeah. you're getting advice from friends, your spouse. Like it, it's yeah, I don't think that's yeah. super beneficial. But I was going to say to the people who like use this, the um, problems or whatever, or the people who keep going with social media, like I, I get it because it's your job. Mm -hmm, like yeah. I, I understand it to a certain extent. Like if anyone was, you know, uh, working as a nurse or something like that, like they can't just up and right. quit and leave. Like, and I get it, but to a certain extent, your life matters. Like, mm -hmm. you know, your mental health matters. All that stuff matters before, um, before work. But, that's, that's how but I'm thankful for the reality check of like, we know that we have the privilege to take a step away if we Great. need to. And mm -hmm. like, I do yeah. think we're seeing on TikTok, like people being like, influencers are so out of touch and this mm -hmm. and that. And I think these types of things are what people need to see. It's like, we we know and we're aware and we know we're not a nurse. We're, we respect those jobs so much because like they don't get days off sometimes. They're right. working those 12 hour shifts. And so I appreciate when influencers are able to kind of be like, we know this is an honor to get to do that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, sure. I also did want to say though, cause like I had that as my question. Mm is how vulnerable are y'all? Because I mean, obviously you don't want to share everything online because there's certain things it's just for you and your spouse or just for you and your friends, but you guys still are vulnerable and I really like appreciate that. So what do you kind of decide to share, not share? How vulnerable actually like are you? Because yeah. what we have seen is you're pretty vulnerable, but there's things in our lives that we're like, probably should just keep that between us, you know, because you don't want to let the whole internet know everything. Right, 100%. right. Yeah, I think it goes with saying like, how you don't want to let any third parties into your marriage, especially, you know, if you're people getting, you don't know, yeah, people you don't know. And um, if you're getting into some type of just like a big life thing, or if you're getting to like a big argument or something like that with your spouse, we don't want to share that. So I think we bring that to social media kind of well, as well. Like, okay, do we want other people's opinions on this? And sometimes it happens on accident. Like, mm -hmm something will go viral for like the wrong reasons. And then it channels like another yep. group of people who are giving their input input or whatever. But um, what do you, what do you, what do you think? I feel like we, it, we are very, I feel like we have vulnerable conversations, especially like since starting our podcast, sure. which I really love because I feel like we can dive more in. Um, but I feel like we keep a lot of our life private. Yeah, we do. And, and it doesn't seem like it, you know, I yeah, think yeah. you guys may feel the same. Like, your life, it looks like it's all just out there, but I think that we keep a lot of it private, but then also we just share, honestly, it's like trial and error. Cause I feel mm -hmm. like we definitely have had times where we've shared way too much and we're like, okay, we need to reel it in. Like that was not the right time to share that or we never should have yeah. shared that at all. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel like we've found like a really good, like ebb and flow of what do we share? What do we not share? What feels yeah. good? Yeah. And I think some of that goes to like, okay, well, how can we help someone how can we encourage or inspire someone yeah. or whatever with our stories yeah. um i've shared like i had a big addiction to porn and then we've shared a lot of our marital problems and um i shared like about postpartum about like postpartum yeah like getting yeah. deep but and then like i think another battle with like expressing those things is like we don't want people to think that we're being fake either like right. not fake but like Oh, well, we don't know you guys for real because you're not sharing everything, you know, and mm -hmm. I don't ever want that to 
come across like that, but then I also have to wheel it in and be like, it's such a tough balance. Yeah. Really like, is. do I share or not share? How much do I share? When do I share? It's like such an interesting yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. So one of the other reasons we brought you guys for this podcast is okay. for marriage counseling. Stop. Um, <laughs> we, you guys are how many years in? Four years. Four years. Four years. And we're four months. So we're four months. <laughs> you know, we want we want children. You know, yeah. we want we want babies. Of course, we post our lives on social media. What advice would you give to us as we navigate through this season with that question of do you show your kids? Do you not show your kids? From what you guys have experienced, how should we go about this? Yeah. Well, you answered this, but I'll preface with saying, like, we are still navigating it yeah. um, as of right and now. we're not experts or anything, Yeah, obviously. we're not experts <laughs> or anything. But as of right now, we um, we do show our kids um, on social media. But our, our, our uh, the subheader with that is, like, our content is centered around them. Mm-hmm. And we don't consider ourselves a family channel and all that stuff that comes with showing your kids, which is what you see on TikTok and YouTube nowadays, which sucks, but I feel like what makes us comfortable too is like if you took our kids away from our content, we wouldn't suffer. Yeah. And like we know that and we can say that because they're not the center. They're in our stuff because they're a huge part of our life. And we we enjoy sharing like photos of them and videos and whatever and like they're in our in our content. But if all of a sudden we decided like tomorrow that we weren't gonna show them anymore. People wouldn't, I mean, I think there would be some people that may be like, oh, you know, Missy and the girls, whatever. But like, I think it would still be our same audience. And mm-hmm. we know that majority of our audience is there for us. That's we started, started with yeah. us and we never wanted to make it about them. Um, who knows how we'll feel. We've always said like, we may not decide one day we don't want to show them anymore at all. But mm-hmm. for now, like we feel comfortable and we don't feel called to yeah. not show them. You guys do it really well though. Yeah. Like yeah. so well Thank to you. the point where it's like, Cause you see couples that don't do it as well, where it's just like, you can, yeah. something feels off. Yeah. You can just kind of be like, okay, I see what you're doing. <laughs> right, right. right. And that's what like, I always think about too. Cause for like, sometimes people still do comment like, well, why are you showing your, and it's showing your kids, but it's like, it's very rare that we see that. But I'm always thinking like, I don't want, when I do show my daughter, I don't want them to think that yeah. I'm doing this for cloud or I'll know to get the views and stuff like that, which Really, for in our case, it really doesn't happen like that because, mm-hmm. like I said, or like she said, people are there for us and, like, the things that we're going through and stuff like that. But um, I don't know. It's, like I said, we're still going through it. And, obviously, when she gets older, um, we'll, she'll definitely have a say. Even, like, right now, our two-year-old, like, she's talking. And there's certain times she would say, like, I don't want my picture taken. Well, and she's want- funny, too. Like, if we start filming, she'll, like, scream oh, or yeah, something. She wants <laughs> to she's, be like, a not part. in it. Like, yeah. she, like, knows. And I'm like, right. Why are you doing so that? Funny. But it's so, it's really awesome to see. Like, if, like, a family member is, like, taking her picture or something. And she's like, no, I don't want to take a picture. Or um, if we're filming and, like, it's not what... I think I've shared this. Like we we wanted to show her a milestone that oh, yeah, she, when she was, was doing. like a baby. Yeah, yeah. When she was a baby or something, and she wasn't doing the milestone on camera. And I'm like, bro, come on! Like <laughs> like this is me, my intern. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> please show them this thing. And we literally, it's on camera. I didn't put it in the vlog, but we literally had a moment. We were like, what, what are, are we you? doing? This yeah. is li- like, <laughs> turn the camera off. And it's literally, it's not about this at all. Like, stop doing that. So I think. Having those moments of realization, which is like, we could talk about this forever, but yeah. I feel like people should have those moments. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. cause you see the content that's out when it comes with family channels yeah. and stuff like that. And, and there are some people who do it well, mm-hmm. they do it very well. I'm not talking about those, but certain things that kids are doing, you just know, and we just know cause we're parents. Sometimes it's not that easy for, to get that kid to do that. Mm-hmm. And then they end up doing it. And then only thing that's going to my mind is like, what'd you do to get that kid to do that? And yep. how do you feel good about yourself? Mm-hmm. Yeah. To, so that's like, like what's always going through my mind. But if we ever got to that point, one, people will keep us in check, we'll, but we'll keep ourselves in check. Mm-hmm. And I think our family will let us know. And I think having accountability too, that will, yeah. will definitely help, which is crazy to say, like having accountability with showing your kids on social media, but yeah. I feel like you should. I totally. feel like the biggest advice too is like whatever you guys would feel comfortable with right. and whatever like the couple feels and the, you know, it's, it's your kids and it doesn't matter like what the trend is because honestly, I feel like now we feel like it's become like almost a trend to not show. And 
I think personally that that actually draws more attention to your kids. Um, obviously it can be done in a really healthy way. And we have tons of friends who don't show their kids and we love the way they do it. And, um, however you choose to do it though, is really all that matters. Like it, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. It's really just how, what like you feel comfortable with. It is interesting in today's day and age, like people try to tell you how to parent and you're like, I'm the parent here. And hopefully like, obviously we know you guys, like you guys are awesome parents. Like there's no ill intention, And obviously we have seen it be abused or misused, but it is weird when random people are trying to tell you how to parent. And I think obviously we're not parents, but we have so many influencer friends that are parents and they always tell me like the mom shame that they get. And I'm like nervous for that. I am like, I'm like, I already get shamed for just being me. Right. Right. I can't imagine bringing in kids and how I'm a mom and you're learning. I mean, how was it for you being like a new mom? Like where people constantly like, you're doing this wrong and that like, Oh yeah. Like I remember when we had our first, we were at the, it was like one of her first doctor's appointments and we had like loosened her car seat because we were inside. And like the amount of DMs, like crazy amount of comments of everyone just saying, hey, you don't have her buckled right. And I think it's so hard because I feel like there's just such a balance with that because I truly do. I really believe that some people are like, they're not trying to be mean. You know, like they really just want to help you. And I appreciate that because I think I've seen like even some other like mom influencers that I follow and they'll be like, hey, someone let me know that I was like wearing this carrier wrong. I didn't know. Like, thank you so much for telling me that. Mm -hmm. So I think it can be good. But then also it just comes with anything. I think, like you said, not even being a parent, just being yourself. People are always going to have something to say. So it's like if you want to take that and be like, hey, thanks. Like, actually, thank you for telling me that. Or if you just want to be like, you know what, like, I don't actually totally. really yeah. care about I think it's the way it's said. Like, yeah. some people come yes. on and they're like, you're the worst mom ever. You yeah. did this yeah. wrong. You're like, okay, you could have worded that a lot better. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And, yeah. it, and it be from, and it be from. And <laughs> it be from, from. It do be, other, you know. It do, it do be, be like that. <laughs> from, like, other moms, too. And I'm like, you mean yes. to tell me you're the most perfect mom right. in yes. the world yeah. commenting on another mom who I get, she's in the public eye, whatever. But y'all also see... 40 seconds, I'm clearly referring to TikTok, obviously, <laughs> but uh, you guys only see 40 seconds of my life, and and that is, you know. Yeah, Janine yeah. posted a photo of, or, a, yeah, posted a photo of me and her, like a Polaroid from like a year and a half ago when we first started dating, mm-hmm. and she was like, look, we were babies, and I, it upset so many moms, where it's like, you guys aren't, you're not a baby. Like this was only a year and a half ago. You're lying. And it was like, not even like a big. I said it like so innocently yeah, too. Right. Like, oh my gosh, but, we're so new in our relationship. That's yeah. what I mean, like babies in our relationship. And yeah. it's always the mom with the American flag in the bio. Oh and it's like gosh. mom of four. Yeah, we got a lot of moms that follow us and roast us. Or That's mean crazy. sometimes. I'm like, mom, Karen, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Like, do you want to be a mom? Like, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. My next question I have for you guys is though, what are like, what are some things that you wish people knew more about you? That what are misconceptions? That's a good question. Because it's like you can, here's the thing is we, we That's a struggle good question. with this. That is Thank a you. great question. You can't, you don't want to tell people, hey guys, really, I am a good person. I promise this is who I am behind the scenes. Like, what are things, this is your floor. What are things yeah. that you wish people really Do not knew be about humble. Y'all? No humbleness here. <laughs> I was going to say, I want to say yours for you. What? <laughs> yeah, do it. Like, okay, can yeah, we do so that? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't want to like hype myself up. So okay, go. I feel like I wish people knew. I don't know. It's so, it, that's like such a loaded question. Cause like, I wish people knew everything about you because like right. they think they know, you know? Oh. Um, but I think just like what a patient and intentional, not only husband, but also now dad that you are hmm. like, I've never witnessed such patience and like gentleness in the way that you love me and then now love our daughters. Mm. Um, and I think so many people could learn so much from you and so I feel like if they're like me telling you what to do but there's a way that like I think no one will truly know obviously because I'm married to you and I see every single second but just that the way that you parent is just like crazy I've never seen anything like it Wow, Wow, making me cry over here. Right? (laughs) Making me feel like I gotta apologize for not being patient. (laughs) Right. But that's so crazy. I mean you like even you saying that it's just so tough because we want to show that question is so good because we yeah. want to show all these things to people. Yeah. And it's tough because, like you said, it's it's a 15-minute YouTube video or it's just a minute TikTok and you, you don't see all that. And then once someone sees one negative thing or whatever, they'll pounce on that. And that's my whole mm-hmm. MO mm-hmm. 
for like that podcast or just people might just think that about me forever mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, but that's really sweet that you said that. Yeah. It's awesome. That's You're um, <laughs> for you, what do I want people to? That's so. I know. I it's know. like, I, I it's feel like, like I everything. barely scratched the surface of what I could say, but. I don't I think say. people fully know like how confident of a person you are. Because I think you kind of sometimes is this like a therapy session? <laughs> I just like <laughs> literally. Yeah, like we're my, how you really look feel. at my leg. It's kind of crazy. Literally, like I'm like, I need to get my clipboard no, out. I love this so much. Um, no, because I feel like, and I'm not to say that people don't think you're confident or whatever, but I just think of how it is sometimes portrayed or whatever. Um, because uh when you do post, you post I love when you do your she does like these um on stories. She doesn't like post almost every single day. She sometimes does like these recaps. Kind I feel of. like a lot of people do that. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I, you do it, okay. and this is the only way a person I know. Okay. Um, <laughs> and she does the well, no, I know other people do it. Yeah. But uh in those, it's like she's like telling she'd be like telling some stories. You'd be having some paragraphs on there, and it's just like, I don't know, I really like it. But I'm saying that to say maybe some people don't fully know how confident you are as a as a woman or whatever. And and that's so crazy because people might think the total opposite, especially like on TikTok. TikTok, this woman drives her TikTok. I'm going to say it. I've <laughs> said it before. She is, she drives her TikTok and everyone loves our TikTok because of her. Um, but I know you and I, and I know like behind these closed doors, you are, you're it. You're like, you know, you're him, you, you know, you're, you're him. Cause like, I'll say this, our relationship, I'm definitely more of the extrovert. I'm definitely the one For that sure, I'll yeah. go. I couldn't tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, like, I really? No way. <laughs> I will like, whatever you, you get it. Um, and Savannah is, is not like that, but when it's, you know, just us or with family or whatever, I'm not saying you're a different person, but I don't think people really, really know that. But I, so I want y'all to know. How confident <laughs> and how strong willed this this girl is. Right. Um, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Now we're straight. No, I'm kidding. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell them how, what do you guys hate about each other? I'm kidding. Right? No, 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 don't do that. Okay, let's go. Let's session. go. Let's get into it. <laughs> okay, so I was gonna say is like on my podcast, it is very advice based. Okay. I mean, my audience are you know 90, 85 percent women, young adult women, and so a lot of them are single, and a lot of them are struggling with identity and confidence, and so. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm going to. <laughs> what would you say to that girl that is lacking confidence or is really struggling with who she is or her body, or maybe she's been teased because of her body, she's mm. a dancer, or whatever, mm. sports? Like, what too, would you say to that girl? Too many chads in her life, too. Too many what? Like, chads in her life. Chads. Oh, the bros? Yeah. Bro. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, what would you say to that girl? Like, how did you find confidence? I feel like it definitely takes time and... I don't know. It's so hard. Like, like I said, growing up a dancer and always having everyone's opinions. Um, there was definitely times where like it got to me for sure. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I mean, I think for like, as believers, we just have to understand that like no one else's opinion matters. And I know that's easier said than done, but I used to be like really guilty of always wondering what other people were thinking, like constantly, even with like our relationship, but definitely with like myself, I would second guess like everything I would even post or what I would wear just like in the real world, not even on social media. And I think it was just like a lot of like work that I had to do on myself. Um, even through our marriage to like, after we got married, I was still struggling just like with confidence and with being secure in who I am. And I think just the root of it really is just like that, all that matters is like who God called me to be and who he believes I am. And I don't really care about what anyone else thinks, but it, it wasn't just like that easy. Right. So I feel like I don't, I don't know if I'm giving the best like practical advice, but just like do the work on yourself and look inward and don't be so focused on like what everyone else is thinking about what you're doing. Amen. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I was also going to ask you guys, what character traits did Wait, you see? Wait, hang on a sec. I need guys advice for the girl too. What? Oh, for confidence? For yeah, what would you say to the girl? To the girl? Yeah, like, like confident. Okay, from the guy's perspective. Yeah. Wait, so uh, ask me. So, so like, like, <laughs> like, how does a girl find her identity? Is what kind of what? Like, you, if a girl oh, is yeah. lacking in security, what would you say from a guy's perspective to a girl? Sorry, yeah. Like, how would you right. help? Well, because and you've kind of even helped. Well, yeah, me I was going to say. That. I feel like for us, it was because, like, obviously, as a guy, sometimes I would go through the same thing, like yeah. not really mm-hmm. knowing who I was. But um, 
one thing about us when we, especially when we got married, but then later on in dating, we want to like pick up where the other person is possibly lacking when it comes to certain things. And that's, you guys, have, people have definitely probably heard that in marriage, but like actually walking through that is a big game changer, especially I'll just go postpartum again. Mm. She literally couldn't like get herself to think that she was, you know, a beautiful, strong mom or someone who's, you know, amazing at being a mother or whatever. I had to instill that in her. I had to, we had to pray. We had to actually, me had to actually um, ask her, what did she want? That's, that's really the advice right there. Like, ask them. Like, what like, do you need? Yeah, like, what do you me? need in this moment? And then mm -hmm. sometimes they literally don't want anything just for you just to be there. And especially with postpartum, um, that was the main thing I had to learn. Like, I really can't do anything. Like, I, I'm out of stuff to do. But you just want me here? Okay, I got it. So, um, yeah. I would just I would just ask ask at like what how can I help you be more confident in whatever and sometimes they need words of affirmation sometimes they it's true need the quality time like you know you never know that's so true I've been through that where I For was sure. like babe I don't feel pretty at all today and he's like are you kidding me yeah I know like, oh man so mad when yeah. she says that it's like why look at you I'm like yes. oh, are you <laughs> look at you good husband <laughs> <laughs> um and I I really love that you keep sharing the postpartum stuff because like that's obviously not something I can necessarily relate to but I have a lot of friends that can and I do think a lot of people listening like I'm not there yet but they could easily go find your journey on that and feel seen because I do think a lot of moms probably struggle with that I've had a lot of friends in my own life that didn't open up about it because they felt so guilty or like why am I struggling with this and so I think those are the situations where I'm like, yes, like sharing your story is so beneficial because mm -hmm. it helps other people find freedom. And so I love that. Yeah. yeah. For sure. um, okay. Kind of wrapping up a little bit. Okay. Wrapping up. I think we're only wrapping long, up. How long are we in? I have I no idea. 10 minutes in, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, <laughs> imagine. <laughs> so, okay. Days. Again, I have a lot of single girls. Okay. And you know, they watched our story and they're just praying for their spouse. They're praying for their, uh, the Jacob that pursues them for seven years, you Come know? <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Wow. I think you guys have talked about this before, but do you get backlash for being an interracial couple? Do we get backlash? I, you know, I feel not like yes. as much as people might think. What you yeah, about to say? I would say yes and no. I feel like we get backlash in the sense like I'll sometimes get like I've gotten comments like, how are you going to know how to, like, do your daughter's hair? Or raise a black kid, a mixed kid, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And how which will you is, handle racism when, like, you've never experienced it yourself? Yeah. Like, that And type mine of would be, oh, why aren't you dating a black queen? Or uh, why aren't you, like, you really wanted to be, like... I think we got it more so when we were dating. Definitely when we were dating. Um, so, yes, it has happened. There was one moment, and you... Uh, I won't share all the details, because we've shared it before on our podcast and some other, but... Like on YouTube, on YouTube, on TikTok, we got kind of canceled in a sense of um, just we, something got like misconstrued. Yeah, something got just misconstrued. Uh, construed it. Construed. Construed. <laughs> um, that's and you and me all the time. <laughs> no, that's, that's all. Construed. Construed. I like construed. That's, that's cool. Construed. <laughs> um, something that uh, was a TikTok that we made or whatever, and the black community. Um, my fellow peoples was really coming for my wife, but they were a majority coming for me. Um, just saying like, why would you let her disrespect us like that? And like all these things. And, um, that, that is something that actually like really did kind of affect me because people were really just like, they, they didn't know who we were as people or mm -hmm. whatever. They were saying things that didn't even line up with nothing. And she wasn't, she was like oblivious to it. She didn't know that all this stuff was even happening or going on um, because nothing really did happen. Someone just took something, stitched it and just went crazy for no reason. Um, but yeah, that is like, there's been certain times I've been on a train in, in, in NYC and like a black lady, like literally it's so crazy. She <laughs> literally uh, told me as I was getting off the train, she was looking at us the whole time and I thought she liked my outfit or her <laughs> outfit or shoes or something like that. Just staring Old black lady, bless her heart. She said, oh, as I'm walking off the train, oh, you don't like chocolate women? Wow. I said, bro, what? <laughs> and I didn't really understand I'm it. I'm even here. Or and no. it was such with a stank attitude and just, 
I'm like, <laughs> stink oh. attitude. I'm like, bro, what? And then I just walked off, and that was that. But also, I was like, this is definitely New York for you. But yeah, um, certain things like that. We've been blessed that we haven't had any like family problems. Good. Like That's good. both of our families love each other, and it hasn't been any negative things with race and stuff. But we are definitely aware of the problem that it is in the world too, mm-hmm. um, especially with being inter- an interracial couple and raising kids and what they were going to instill in our girls and our boy. Yes. Crazy. Yeah, I um, I keep saying that. That who they are. They are black. They are mixed. Mommy is white. Daddy is black. We've started um, even like with our two year old. Oh Just, yeah. Like, like with like our two. Yeah. Having conversations with her. Wow. Telling her like, it's so funny. She, we <laughs> say like, what color is mommy and what color is daddy? And mm. just like, cause one of those things I don't, I personally don't like when people say like, I don't see color. Mm. I see color and I think everyone should see color, but respect everyone. Be equally, not because yeah. of that, but yeah, just equally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, we want to instill that in, in our, in our girls and that's how we're, how we're flowing. But yeah, the, the hate, it really doesn't get to us that much. That's awesome. Yeah. I love wow. that. Thank you for, yeah, for sure. That. Yeah. It's not, it's not even weird or awkward either. It's just, you know. It just, it just blows my mind that that's still a thing today. I it's, know. That's what know. blows our mind. Yeah. It's and like, you, we're still doing this. And you're probably like, I'm just, I'm just, savant- like, I. Yeah. And I wasn't trying to do nothing. Yeah. yeah. Right. You just love a man and want to sure. marry the love of your life. Yep. And you're yeah. like, in a way, could have a target on your back. And you're like, I didn't even do anything. Right. right. Yeah. So, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know. Did you have a final question? What is. A Christian, what's like a Christian hot take? Something that you can't stand. Christian ick. You're just like, that's not, that's, I hate that. <laughs> Anything, the spectrum is Anything. wide. Anything. Wide. I mean, why are we not preaching the Bible? Oof, tell them. Yeah. Like, at what point is someone going to be like, well, I mean, people are saying it, but like, where does it even say that in the Bible? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, where is the Bible? Like it's literally, like we can <laughs> keep it right there. Like that's so good. What are we? What are we doing? Hit the applause. Yeah, I know. Oh, like, where's the applause oh, yeah. button on the oh, soundboard? Yeah. I don't know if I have it. On, I don't think I did it on this one. But um, <laughs> strictly, get, can we just like what are we? What are we doing? Yeah. I mean, I think the people who know know. Like what? This sounds obviously like this sounds like a, a motivational speech. It sounds like we're just trying to. You know, peace. And the thing is, I get because someone will say, well, we're trying to reach the new believers. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the Bible isn't enough. Like the Mm -hmm. Bible can't reach. Do do you know the stories that are in the Bible? Like who literally what who all this stuff was happening to non-believers, people who didn't even believe in people who turned their back on. You're preaching like, bruh, come on. So anyways, when people when people say that, like, say, oh, well, we got to. Make it sexy for the yep. for that person coming yeah. in, bruh. Come yeah. on, right? Jesus dying Try wasn't sexy. Try was something yeah. different. Right. Like the yeah. Bible is a uh, bruh. It's and sufficient. I'm, and I'm saying this to say we went to churches like that, mm-hmm. and we eventually found a church home in Michigan where we used to live. And I mean, we would weeks. They're probably still in it. Um, a series just on like a a, a Bible scripture, and on 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 a, on a Bible um. On a book in the Bible. And for us, that was new. Like, for them to take a whole chapter, a whole book, and just dissect that for, like, Mm -hmm. six months or whatever. And I'm like, wait a minute. yeah, I haven't been going to any type. Like, yeah, though, the first verse is, like, you know, the premise or whatever. But, like, everything else that is talked about, what? Yeah, like, you don't always have to tell, like, a funny story. You don't have to do the, like, trendy things to be relatable. Yeah. These are our people, I swear. <laughs> That's <laughs> so. We have been on this soapbox for a while. Bruh, let's. <laughs> so what let's all say? move to the same city. Yeah. Just yeah. Let's yeah. just go Raise somewhere. our kids with your kids. Yes. 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 You guys don't know that sounds like a dream. Yes. Let's like do a big it. Dream. Yeah, that's so funny. I. I could go off on this, oh, but 100%. I, we'll save I it for won't. dinner tonight. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that we'll over dinner. Because <laughs> I do feel like a lot of people are just trying to do whatever goes viral, and I'm like, is for that sure. even biblical? Is that even like true? Yeah. Or right. did you just take that from a Pinterest quote? And I mean, I I don't know. People could probably say that about me, but I, I know, really right. do try to just teach the Bible because that is sufficient what you were saying. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I don't want to be hypocritical, but I'm trying to lean more away from that. I agree because for I sure. think I used to do that, and I'm like. I was an authentic doing that. So yeah. I like that take. Bring the Southern Baptist back. Let's go. Stop, <laughs> Southern Baptist Stop that. Is insane. <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming on Happy and Healthy. Y'all, y'all are a yeah, blast. I love following so you guys, supporting you guys. We yes. love what you guys are 
doing. Guys, go check out their podcast. Go check out their TikTok, Jeez. YouTube. What else do you guys have? Is that um, it? Anything yeah, else you want to yeah. plug? YouTube, Instagram. Just, yeah. No. Y'all's book is coming next. Has it, say it again. <laughs> we need a, We need a, like an autobiography or we need something. We need a book. Oh, oh, yeah. Book. What? Book. You need to write. Well, yeah. I, I've always wanted to write a book, yeah. but okay. yeah. it's not, hey. nothing's in the works. Um, that is a lie from the pit. She has a <laughs> note right no. now. That Let's has go. I think it, it would be cool if we wrote a book, though. Yeah, it would be, but your book is in the works. Yes. Your book's going to say it. I, got, I have the title for your book. You do. So you think you can dance. <laughs> wow. That's wow. Title. Cool. Let's go. He's so. revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> you are canceled. <laughs> I love it. That's funny. <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming on. You guys go check out their channel. This was a blast. I love you. You're cute. Thank you. We should do this again more often. Subscribe to our Patreon. And yes. uh, check out my book, Becoming Happy and Healthy. We'll see you guys woo-hoo. again next Tuesday for another episode of Happy and Healthy. But until then. It's all we ever wanted. What should they do? Huh? Stay happy and healthy. Yep. Bye, guys. <laughs> see you guys.